Good morning, and welcome to St. Martin de Porres Church. Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time and World Mission Sunday, and we expend, extend a very special welcome to any newcomers to our weekly online Masses. Here are the Mass intentions for Sunday, October 18th. For the Saturday evening Mass, October 17th, let us remember in prayer Jerry Nixon, requested by the family. For the nine o'clock Mass on Sunday, for our parish community. And for the 11 o'clock Mass on Sunday, let us remember in prayer, Alf McCabe, requested by the family. And Alan and Lorne Hart, requested by the family. Our presider is our pastor, Father Titus. Please join me in our prayer to our patron, St. Martin de Porras. St. Martin de Porras, you are the most holy patron of our parish. Be with us, your people, as we prayerfully journey together as the people of God. Help us to rediscover the richness and depth of our faith. Help our parish and school family grow together as a community of faith in which we share your love with one another. Grant us growth in faith as we strive to live Christian community in our homes, in our parish, in our schools, and in our world. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn is To God with Gladness Sing. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery swordly, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, to you, all, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my ways, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. 
We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always confirm our, our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that all may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the peoples with equity. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The second reading is from a letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all you and, men and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that He has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in the power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know you are sincere and teach the ways of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell me then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. The Gospel of the Lord. Never in the history of humankind have we found ourselves more in need of hearing and living the message of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what is the kingdom of God? Where is it? What does it mean to us? The kingdom of God can be summarized as the everlasting realm where God is sovereign and Jesus reigns forever. Check out John 18.36 in his response to Pontius Pilate. The kingdom of God is one of the key elements mentioned 80 times, 80 times in the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. The kingdom of God is the universe made up of hundreds of billions of planets and stars there are over 17 billion planets larger than the Earth, just in the Milky Way. One solar system out of tens of thousands of solar systems. More than the grains of sand on the Earth. And the universe is over 13 billion, not million, billion years old. This comes from the National Science Foundation. On the other hand, the Earth this Garden of Eden, our temporary home away from home, this tiny green dot in the midst of the universe, full of abundance, rich in natural resources, sustains and nurtures our human life. Did you know we are traveling at 73,000 kilometers per hour through space? If you go up to the space station and look down you see a tiny green dot there are almost eight billion people on that planet and all we see is a tiny green dot we're not in control of anything except how we live amongst each other and care for our common home who do you trust who do you listen to who in today's world is the keeper of truth? Consider these facts and observations. 
We are in the midst of a worldwide pandemic that is indiscriminately making people very ill and taking the lives of the most vulnerable. Our seniors, minorities, the poor, and the defenseless have become, in some countries, pawns in a political game of the haves and the have-nots. For the sake of progress and prosperity, we appear ready to sacrifice the unborn abortion and the elderly and sick euthanasia. Instead of feeding the poor, those over three billion people that go to bed hungry every night, the wealthy nations choose to build bigger barns. Read the parable of the rich, rich fool, Luke 12, 16, 21. Our ecosystem is collapsing before our eyes. Nature is convulsing and the ice caps are melting. There are massive fires in the Russian Arctic and in the, in the Amazon forests and California. There are multiple hurricanes and flash floods and farmers are experiencing dust storms and drought as never before. The mantra, fake news, fills the airwaves in an increasingly polarized world of national interest, self-interest and exploitation. Truth has become a victim of relativism, power, greed and expediency. We can't even agree on the simplest of things today like wear a mask, social distance, respect and protect your neighbor. This is the world we live in today and it can be very frightening and overwhelming. Today's gospel speaks of two worlds, the earth and the kingdom of God. The world of Caesar, which represents the politics of power, greed and manipulation. And the kingdom of God, that which is beyond our understanding and yet accessible to all who knock on that door. Today's gospel, Jesus responds to their manipulation of the truth by simply asking religious elites where their loyalties lie. Is it with love of God and neighbor or with the love of money, power and control? I guess when you're the son of God, you are in the know and see a much bigger picture from, God's, from a God-centered universal kingdom of God. You know, somehow some people have in their minds that the world is the center of the universe and they can take what they want and act as they please with this gift of life from God. This is a complete distortion of truth, truth and a recipe for the disaster. Just look at the mess that we're in. But there is good news. Just as Jesus brought us the good news of the Father's love for us, he modeled that love in human form to his gentle care for us, to his kindness, generosity, compassion, justice, and mercy. Yes, the message was clear. Jesus walked the talk and modeled how we are to respect and enjoy and show gratitude for the gift of life itself. Pope Francis tweeted this week, Jesus invites us to accept an invitation to follow him, but also points out one must be open to a journey of conversion which changes our hearts. This is life in the spirit, a relationship with the divine, a way to live and be in the world but not of the world. Jesus invites us to accept the invitation to follow his example and care for all, all of our neighbors, black, brown, yellow, poor, disabled, and broken. This relationship with the divine is a personal relationship, a state of being, living and being in the kingdom of God. This is the good news. This is our faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Can I get an amen? Today's gospel, Jesus calls us to give to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God's. 
And Jesus' response in today's gospel can help us reflect on our motives and loyalties in a new light. Here is more good news on October 4th this year. The Feast of St. Francis. Pope Francis asked us to rethink how we live together on this cosmic speck of dust we call Earth in his new encyclical Fertati Tutti, Children of the New Earth. Following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and St. Francis, Pope Francis in his encyclical presents to the world a vision and a roadmap of living together in solidarity with each other. In chapter one called Dark Clouds Over the World, he addresses the many distortions of, of this contemporary era. He shines a light on the manipulation and deformation of concepts such as democracy, freedom, and justice. He surfaces the loss of the meaning of social community, selfishness, and indifference towards the common good. He addresses the prevalence of market logic based on profit and highlights the culture of waste. He speaks to the unemployment, racism, poverty, the disparity of rights, and its aggregation such as slavery, trafficking, and women's subjugation. We can see in the encyclical, Pope Francis clearly and prophetically speaking truth to power. And in the following chapters, he addresses COVID-19. He speaks to a better politics centered on human dignity and pro-life in all forms, including our intimate relationship with nature and respect for all, all of life. He calls for the total elimination of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons that can destroy humanity and life on this earth. The encyclical is visionary, direct, and profoundly timely in addressing the brokenness and woundedness of our human condition today. It is totally Christ-centered and prophetic for our time. In this encyclical, Pope Francis offers the world a clear vision and hope for a better tomorrow. You can find a copy of Fratelli Tutti on our Facebook page, Flocknote, and the Vatican website. I encourage you to read this encyclical and share it with your family and friends. I want to leave you with this final thought. It is a simple, ref it's simple, reflective, and spoke volumes to me. We fell asleep in one world and woke up in another. Suddenly, Disney was out of magic. Paris is no longer romantic. New York doesn't stand out anymore. The Chinese wall is no longer a fortress and Mecca is empty. Hugs and kisses somewhat suddenly become weapons and not visiting parents and friends becomes an act of love. Suddenly we realize that power, beauty, mo and money are worthless and can't get us the oxygen we're fighting for. The world continues its life and it's beautiful. It puts humans in cages. I think it is sending us a message. You are not necessary. The air, earth, water, and sky without you are fine. When you come back, remember that you are my guest and not my master. That's something to think about, really. Thank you. God bless. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He has sent it into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we offer our prayers to the one in whose image we are made and whose law is inscribed on our hearts. For the church, may the Lord strengthen and protect each one of us, his servants. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in opposed in oppressed regions of the world, may God deliver them and bring them freedom and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for those who are ill with the virus, especially those in our parish who have requested our prayers, may Jesus, the divine physician, offer them hope and provide healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people of our community, may God's voice always resound clearly in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially those who have no one to pray for them, may they enjoy their fullness of eternal life with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness, hear and answer the prayers of those you claim as your own. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we begin to prepare the gifts, let us bring the gifts from our neighboring school, Our Lady of Peace, from the children during their Thanksgiving celebration. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives to you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a few sacrifices may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same spirits graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this living, this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Martin the poorest, our patron saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity you are to pray in church on earth with your servants, Francis our Pope, and Terence our Bishop, Marcel our Coadjutor Bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many. I now invite you to join us in receiving your own Holy Communion spiritually.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, our praise and all thanksgiving be every moment dying. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, our praise and all thanksgiving be every moment dying. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, our praise and all thanksgiving be every moment dying. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you and those you love in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, and you have a very lovely day. Our closing hymn is Praise to the Lord.